Hi everybody, thanks so much for watching. Just for a little bit of fun and something different for any of you that homeschool or are interested in um, high quality books for children for coloring or art or learning the application of colors. Um, these technically are classified as adult, adult coloring books for adult colorists. But, you know, instead of giving kids those really cheap dark brown-ish paper, you know, um, pictures to color that have um, big blocky shapes, giving them something a little more challenging can actually help further develop their art skills. And so I'm going to show you an inside look at some of these coloring books, including pages I did, so you can see a sample of how they look. And it was great fun doing this. Um, and I haven't done a picture in all of them yet, but first I want to show you this one, this is actually The Night Before Christmas. It's a storybook, but it also has um, a grayscale picture as you can color, and it's by a Dover coloring book. So and it shows you a sample of how some of them can look. But, um, so it gives a little intro to Clement Seymour. And so um, it's grayscale pencil, but you can easily go over it with lighter colored markers and color in their own storybook of The Night Before Christmas, and they can also practice in reading the story or reading it to them. And I know it looks really dark, but I've done a lot of grayscale or pencil line gray um, colorings over, and, and as long as you don't do colors too dark, it really looks really nice, really beautiful, in fact. So here we have the traditional story with some of the images, and it's kind of fun because, you know, they can, kids, even if they don't do a very good job, they love the idea of even, um, having the story read back to them on Christmas um, of a book that they themselves color pictures in. I mean, it could take, you know, two or three Christmases to get all of these done. So if they can take good care, the only thing would be um, when it comes to art mediums that a lot of markers are bleed through. So if you want to preserve the book as a storybook, you have to choose and research markers or pens or gel pens generally do not bleed through. Colored pencils do not generally bleed through. Um, some markers do not bleed through, such as Tombow markers. Some of them, a lot of the oil markers do, Spectrum Noir and whatnot. So, um, and I just tested a little bit of red right here on Santa's Hat. You can see, so this is a beautiful book. Um, John O'Brien's and I Before Christmas. So just for fun, also let's take a look at, since we're talking about Christmas, I have picked up a copy of Creative Haven Christmas Cats coloring book, and these have kind of mosaic style. And these actually are a little bit more challenging uh, because you have some surrealism, you have pictures inside pictures and whatnot. And so this can actually be, you know, a nice way for kids to practice um, detail, which helps them focus. They learn focus, they learn um, patience. They, it helps, you know, certain parts of their brain develop by, by narrowing and trying to keep color in certain lines. I mean, obviously this would be better for kids that might be a little bit um, beyond third grade. But I did a couple, just so you can see how they look. I did the kittens in the basket. Um, I actually did use mark. See, these pages are single-sided, so you can use the heavier markers, the ones that bleed through. Um, did this one here, the Christmas boots. So you can see, but this is a beautiful one. Yeah, some really beautiful pictures. Noel, cats ice skating, cats kissing with a, and a pile of ornaments, snow cats, Merry Christmas, Christmas tree of cats. So this is really fun. Um, depending on the child's age, um, it can be fun for families to do this together. Mom and or dad and each kid doing a different picture and seeing who likes whose picture best. So this is such some fun creative art that kids can do during the month of December and get a little look inside it. This one is pretty with the cat wreath. I love the cats hanging in the basket. So there's a little sample of this one, Creative Haven Christmas Cats. And these Creative Haven books are like $4.99, $5 on Amazon, very inexpensive. Um, now, kids wouldn't appreciate this, but I'm a child of the 1980s, so I have a big... I'm a big fan of retro um, pop culture stuff like Strawberry Shortcake, Care Bears, My Little Pony, Cabbage Patch Kids. And so this one is really fun. This was a retro coloring adventure. Um, My Little Pony. I just did a few in here. These these do bleed through, as you can see. I chose to use markers on the ones that I don't care if I like the picture on the other side, just because I, you know, I didn't care that much. So it really depends on the book. So I did this one, for example, with markers. And it was kind of fun because... 
you know, for a child, um, you can teach them a little bit of history. You can teach them, if you're doing homeschooling or whatnot, you could teach them about, um, you know, classic 1980s toys, the history of the toys, why they're still popular today, how the toys, you know, how they affected society. There's a great television show series that airs every year in December. If you have like DirecTV or something, you can search for it, but it's Christmas through the ages. And there's a Christmas special, Christmas of the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I think there's one of the 50s and it talks and it shows all about what was popular for toys um, in that time and whatnot. And so the one of the 1980s was great fun because it talked all about, you know, I mean, My Little Pony is still going today. Now it's gone through three different versions of the ponies. This was considered in the 80s, the original G1, Generation 1, how they originally looked, which is what I like. I don't really like the look of the new My Little Ponies, but they became just this, this international phenomenon. There's actually a book on Amazon called My Little Pony Inventory. It's a hardback book that shows, it's a huge book and it shows there's like thousands of My Little Ponies, all unique, all cute, adorable names, and from each generation, and um, it talks about the history of them and shows all the pictures of them in that book. So you can actually make My Little Pony into a homeschool lesson. And this one, you know, some of them I'm not too, wasn't too keen on. I don't particularly love books that have the black backgrounds, but, and you can also, if you're having a child do this, have them do research. Um, there's also a website, My Little Pony U US, My Little Pony UK inventory, by by year of the, the ponies starting from the 80s up until now and so they can try to do some research online go through the pony inventories buy pictures and try to identify the pictures um these are what they call cutie marks on the pony so every pony has a cutie mark so this one's the one, name of this one was tic-tac-toe um this one was applejack if i recall this one was gusty i believe so, but they can try to, you can have the, your child do some research through the database and try to match this blank pony with the cutie mark to what it's supposed to have looked like when it was originally created and then um, choose the original colors when they do these pictures. So, and I like how they have this on like the 80s notebook paper. I did a couple more in here. Let's see if we can find them. Here's another one I did. Um, the only thing I don't like is how they make the cutie marks black. They should have made them Outline so you can color them in how they're supposed to look. These cutie marks on um, Gusty were green. She is a white pony with that kind of Christmassy um, colored mane. So I thought this was kind of fun. I tried to use a lot of fun retro colors. And you can even talk to your child about art, colors of art, um, you know, tr how color palettes were more in the 60s and 70s and 80s versus versus now, you know, and, and study a little bit of uh, art palette colors. Uh, that kind of match colors of fashions and whatnot in certain decades, which is fun. You can teach a whole whole lot of history from the 1980s because the children are, are never going to experience history in the 50s or history in the 80s because they weren't around at that time. And so there's a lot to be learned about culture and society and way of life and um, trends and fads um, that make up, you know, where we got to today so that you can make a lot of unit studies around uh, decade time periods. Let's see, I know I have another one or two in here somewhere. I think one of them I might not have finished. And I mostly did these to give some examples. I mean, there's a lot of fun pictures in here. Some of them are pretty complicated. I mean, we're talking dozens of little butterflies. Some of them are very basic. I like this one that has like an arcade theme background. Here's one I started but haven't finished. Um, and there's another one I finished in here. Really, my favorite one. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I love this one. This one was so much fun. This is a Snuzzle, I believe was her name. These were the original basic collection. This is Parasol. Oh dear, I forgot her name. But anyway, so I basically picked six different colors and I repeated the pattern on the wallpaper. So, you know, if you're teaching a child, you can talk about geometric pattern. And um, so I kind of made just like a soda shop thing. So anyway, that was a, this is a really fun book. I really enjoyed this quite a bit as would probably your, you and your child. Um, and we're talking about retro 80 stuff. Let's talk about another um, Strawberry Shortcake advanced coloring book. This was technically made for advanced colorists. Again, older children, teenagers, adults, and the whole adult coloring fad. But a child who, if you're teaching about you know, the art, the look, the, the toys, the fads, the history of 1980. Strawberry Shortcake was another one. And I did some pictures in here and I love Strawberry Shortcake. And I, again, I tried to use kind of those retro-y colors, um, the monotones and the, the dulls, the oranges and yellows and browns that were kind of more typical for leaving the 70s going into the 80s. But this book was so much fun. And again, these are single-sided. So 
You don't have to worry about them bleeding through and it has all the strawberries working in her friends. And this, these, this is all considered, the books I'm showing you, high quality art paper compared to regular children's coloring books, which have that cheap kind of brownish tinged, like easily rip paper that little kids use crayons on. So this would be a little bit for children that want to have a little bit more art skills, um, can put patterns and themes and colors together, keep in the lines, stuff like that. And um, here's one I have just barely started. I did do this one. Let's see what else. Some of these are, you know, tedious backgrounds. But, and I don't particularly care for the repeating pattern ones. I, I find those to be pointless. I just started putting in some face, I have skin tone markers um, that I do bleed through, but that's okay because they're single sided. I did this one, this pattern one. Let's see what else did I do. I did all these in like two days just because I wanted to show, show you guys some of these books. And, you know, it's a great stress relief, too, for, like, just to kind of zone out and listen to Netflix or documentaries or whatever while you're doing these and not have to think about too many things. Um, I started this one, didn't finish with Strawberry Shortcake and Her Friends, Blueberry Pie, Lemon Drop, maybe is her name. I'm not sure I remember. And there's about, but this one was great fun, too, if you are doing, a, like, a 1980s history unit and you want to incorporate some art, you can go into Strawberry Shortcake. Not to be confused with the... Uh, early 2000s strawberry shortcake new version who has like neon pink hair and they made cartoons based on her which does not look at all like the original strawberry shortcake and if you're going to teach history units to kids by a decade um, history you know it would be important to show the original pop culture look of the, of the art and the toy and the creation and compare it with the new one um but i always prefer the originals um this one was a, a much more advanced book, Mystical Place, Mystical Cats and Secret Places, again, for cat lovers. Um, and these are really complicated, kind of, I guess you could say mosaics as well, but it's really fun to look at the art. And these also can be considered, for art, line drawings. Um, so you have cats in teacups, cats in roller skates, cats in a treasure chest. I have a couple in here done. I did this one. Um, cat outdoor in the woods to see but you see how it, within the cat again you have um a lot of flowers and pictures and within pictures so <coughs> and it bled through this is the back side of that oh, wait oh no no it's not oh yeah you're, yeah yeah okay oh yeah so these are not single-sided right so this one bled through here and this one bled through here so this one i didn't finish but these are two individual ones that i haven't finished yet using i tried to use primarily neons and i used um but you see how this one barely bled through compared to how much ink is on here these were tombow markers tombow markers are high quality art markers they generally don't bleed through but i did thick layers on a few spots um which might be why it finally did this one was not um one of them was not tombow this one was not tombow markers you can see it went all the way through but they really do turn out beautiful you have a cat with a, a basket cat in a well just married cats there's a, there's a queen Cleopatra cat. Let's see what else. Cats in the garden. You know, I like, I would, for homeschooling particularly, giving, um, giving kids, especially if they're more advanced kids, you know, half an hour a day to work on pictures, a particular picture as part of an art assignment, give them a week to finish one complicated picture, but they have to put their all into it, all their effort, and you have to, you know, talk about different art mediums and different styles of mediums, pencil, gel pen, marker, you know, pastel, and, you know, I love, but kids also love to see a completed piece of work, regardless how good it is, they, are, they feel really proud of it. Um, some of these, this one doesn't, are perforated, they tear out, this one does not. I think there are some holiday ones in here. Oh, there's a Cinderella. And do I have another one I did in here? Perhaps not. Here's the, the um, not Cleopatra, but well, ancient Egypt, you have the pyramids here. And the pharaoh, pharaoh cat, that's what I was looking at. Here we have more of a Zorro cat. And I'm not sure I love this, but there's a pistol in here. Um... I guess I didn't do any more in here, but you, this one is really a little bit more expensive, this book, probably around eight to ten dollars, but oh yeah, I did do one. I guess I did wrong. I did two. Okay, I forgot about this one. Um, 
This one I used Spectrum Noir markers I got off of HSN and they're high quality markers and they do bleed. And this one I use entirely gel pens. So you can see, you probably can't tell anybody, but it has like a sheen, a glimmer, and it's a darker themed. So here you see the Spectrum Noir is entirely bled through, but that's okay because I didn't like the picture on the other side. So that's what I do. I go through and I'm like, I don't like that picture. I'm not going to do it anyway. So I'll do, if I like what's on the other side, I'll do it with my good markers. Okay, well, everybody, well, I think I showed you enough. So Mystical Cats in Secret Places, Cat Lovers Coloring Book. Thanks everybody for watching. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and like and follow our Facebook page, Children's Literature Training Academy.